Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I am a content marketing manager here at Resonate and I'd like to welcome you to Resonate's newest video series, The Five and Five. And each week we will be talking to a Resonate expert about five tips or insights to help brands and agencies get through this uncertain time in roughly five minutes. So without further ado, I'm here with Erica McCoy, our Chief Marketing Officer here at Resonate and she's here to share five key insights from our newly released report um, titled Understanding the U.S. Consumer Sentiment During the Coronavirus Pandemic. And you can find uh, this full report um, and find out about the methodology and everything at the link you'll find at the end of this video. So thanks for joining us today, Erica, to walk through this. My pleasure. I'm super excited to share these insights, especially um, as they're breaking um, news. People are changing how they're, their sentiment, how they're reacting to things. So I think it's great to explore some of the five key insights that we've seen. So let's dive right into it. Um, insight number one from our report. So the majority of U.S. consumers are actually more concerned with the economic related impacts of COVID-19 than they are about the health related impacts. So that's pretty interesting. So why don't we uh, head over to Erica? She can show us some of our graphs and, and talk us through this. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's really interesting to see how people are feeling about their finances versus their health. I mean, we see that um, 80 percent of people are more concerned about their economic health versus their physical health. And I think that's just at a time when it's um, there's so much news about different regions, especially the New York region, how people are feeling um, hospitals being overrun or um, you know out of resources. It's really interesting to see that people are still focused on the recession, losing their job, um, and things that relate to economic impact um, versus the health impact. And I think this is something, because we have our data um, updated nightly, we will probably see this shifting and changing over time um, as different areas are impacted more intensely by illness. Um, and so that's something that we'll be watching. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, insight number two, when it comes to COVID-19 concerned, people are less concerned about themselves getting sick and a little bit more concerned about others getting sick. So I think there's not a lot of good news um, that we hear, uh, but I think what we see here is actually a little bit of a good news story. Um, people are caring more about their loved ones. Um, you can see here that they're worried about elderly family contracting the virus, other direct family members contracting the virus. All of this is a growing to a very large extent. Essentially, they're, they're worried about that. Concern for themselves, personally is is actually not as large and i think that's you know it's a this is a, a loving community which i think is really good the other area that they're really really concerned about is obviously um you know whether or not nurses doctors um, hospitals have what they need in terms of the equipment in terms of the um, resources to care for everyone and you can see here just a huge um, number of people that are very, very concerned about those resources being depleted. So it's really a, a story about um, people seeing beyond maybe their themselves, which I think is, is a great story to see during crisis. And I think here you also see a lot of the influence of the news and some of the news that's being, um, has been promoted really since the start of this um, crisis about ventilators, about um, hospitals being overrun. And I think that that's where you see a lot of this concern being expressed. So the next uh, couple insights, uh, insights three and four. Um, so the first insight, people are following the news surrounding COVID-19 regularly throughout the day. And then insight number four, more people are actually getting their news about coronavirus from Facebook than they are from national news networks such as CNN, Fox, or MSNBC. And this is a crazy, um, revelation to me. This surprised me too. I mean, I, I you know, I think we, we learn, we hear a lot about the news cycles and people being tapped into the news, but the numbers here on question 13 really did surprise me. 62% of people are following regularly throughout the day and almost 30% of the people are following constantly throughout the day. So that 30% constantly tapped into that news cycle followed by a 62% that's 
regularly tap into that news cycle, that is, you know, two sides of a coin. One, a very distracted um, uh, audience. So to some extent, if you think about people are, uh, you know, working from home, they might have their children at home, um, you know, have big shifts in the way that they live their daily life, um, confined to a large extent. And the, the flip side of the coin, <clears throat> excuse me, fully engaged, very, very engaged. And so if I'm an advertiser and I'm thinking, is this a good time to advertise? I would say, yeah, largely it is a good time to advertise. Now, the devil in the details is what is the message that you use and how do you, you know, how are you engaging with people in a way that's, that's respectful, that's showing who you are, but you know, you can clearly see people are engaged. The second kind of key insight here, uh, you know, wh what they're engaging with. I was really surprised to see the numbers of people, 12% getting their data from their actual news from Facebook. So um, that was really interesting to me. You would think that when the, there's a crisis that's this important, that's impacting people's health and wealth and livelihoods, you know, they would say, you know, I need to go to what I would perceive to be the authority on news, um, a CNN, a, you know, a Wall Street Journal, um, even New York Times, uh, Fox, like any of the big, big networks. And, you know, really what we're seeing is people are turning, one, to their, to their local news. So they're, it's that community orientation again. Um, I want to I wanna be tapped into what's happening right next, right in my backyard. It makes sense, right? Are people around me getting sick? Um, how are businesses around me um, being impacted? So one, it's local. But two, I think the Facebook thing, just really, really interesting to me. And, and I think that's an extension of a local community. If you think about um, a, the way that Facebook's set up, um, people's networks, it's a way to be connected. Um, it's a way, they're certainly spending more time on Facebook, being connected with, with family and friends and spread around the country and around the globe. But they're also getting a lot of community information on Facebook. So there's a lot of, you know, your, your neighborhood's Facebook page, your community's Facebook, your town's Facebook page. So I think there's, you know, that local extension has, is probably pe keeping people rooted in Facebook. And, and because there's that promotion of news happening in Facebook, people are getting their news from Facebook. So that's really fascinating. And I think that really the third dimension of all this is when you look here at question 15 and you see that 45% of people feel like it's the news is appropriately representing what's happening. I think that's really interesting too. If you combine that with the insight about Facebook and you look at the fact that Facebook has had so much negative news about how they handle, you know, politics, if they were, um, you know, if they, and, and, and they were, depending, right, on, on how you see it, deeply involved in, in political scandal and were being manipulated in their, in, their, in their political views. I mean, you have 45% of the people are saying, I feel like it's appropriately represented. So really, really fascinating kind of expression, uh, media expression from, from the U.S. consumer. Um, and so for our final and fifth insight, um, consumers overall are decreasing their visits to the grocery store and they're increasing ordering takeout and delivery. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can look at this chart here. There's obviously, this is a really tough time for retailers. Retailers are trying to decide, um, you know, determine what is the best course of action for them with the regulations that are being presented to them, the regulations, some of them changing um, you know, day to day and, and week to week. And so there's obviously some things that we expect to see in terms of visiting grocery stores or pharmacies. Definitely a, a lot of people that are, are you know, decreasing their trips. Um, you know, there are, there's a whole group of people that, that consumers who like to shop at the grocery store, there are people, depending on where you live, right, that, that make it a, a, a daily habit. I'm going to swing by my local market. I'm going to swing by my grocery store, pick up dinner for tonight. So there is clearly a shift in that type of regularity. Um, people are, are definitely thinking of ways to reduce the number of trips they're making to the grocery store or pharmacy. And I think you can see that you know, clearly here. Um, obviously, groceries, groceries online growing. So I think that's what we would expect to see. People finding other ways of getting their groceries, not wanting to take that extra trip maybe doing a little bit more planning on, on their meals and being able to um, order their groceries online. We see a, a big increase there where people are, are making some shifts. Um, you can see that in the second half of this graph here. I think one that's really interesting, and, and again, you know, it changes day to day, but ordering food or takeout for delivery, really pretty 
significant increase and, and some people staying the same. And to me, this ties to data that we already know. Um, over the last couple of years, you know, globally, but, but surely in the United States, um, the number of people dining out um, and then ultimately the number of people that are um, delivering food has increased so substantially that, that it was really on track to um, exceed the amount of money spent in the grocery store um, delivery would exceed the amount of money spent in the grocery store this this year. So if you think about it, the the folks were moving towards that out already. There's just large swaths of the population that on a regular basis order order delivery, very comfortable with that, lunch, dinner, breakfast, everything. Um, you might think people were feeling a little bit concerned about maybe I shouldn't be ordering out at all and I'm just going to start um, you know, growing my own, cooking my own, um, whatever it needs to happen. And we may see a bigger shift towards that uh, in the coming months as this, this crisis endures. But clearly there are a lot of people that still feel comfortable getting their takeout. And, you know, we attribute this to what we're seeing in some of the other data slides, really a sense of community. So there's been a ton of communication coming out um, locally, uh, within certain markets, within certain communities, again, Facebook and other places communicating, help your local business. Um, you'll see large brands even advertising how they're, what are they doing to help their local bartender, help their local restaurant. Entire um, pages have jumped up that are places you can safely get carry out food. So clearly this, this idea of helping your neighbor, helping your community, and an act of delivering food is, is really kind of almost a charitable act, I think is why we're seeing this, you know, staying the same and increasing um, right here.